What's up gamers, Dreamcast Guy here, and today I have been playing a ton of Dark Souls on Nintendo Switch, something I don't think I'm ever going to get used to saying. If you've been following me for a bit, I'm sure you know that this is one of my favorite trilogies ever, so it's really miraculous to see it on a handheld, and I want to kind of just talk about what I think about how it runs and plays on this system. If you haven't already, be sure to like this video and subscribe, but now let's get into the nitty gritty details of Dark Souls on Nintendo Switch switch. There's a term I've heard a lot over the course of the last year and a half, specifically from fans, that says something along the lines of, I won't play something unless it's on Nintendo Switch. Whether it be a first-person shooter, an RPG, or an action-adventure, there is definitely a certain demographic of people who will not even try something unless it's on this hardware. So I want to try and approach this game from a direction as if you've never ever tried Dark Souls, which is a shame because these games are super super good. So my biggest concern going into this was that the controls wouldn't feel right. Because these games are very very brutal. If you make a mistake or just get caught off guard by an ambush, you can be instantly killed and lose hours of work if you haven't stopped at a campfire. And I can safely say that everything in this Switch port feels very very tight. Never once did I get killed by something just popping out and me not being able to react in time. I will say though that by default the camera speed is exceedingly high. Like just trying to turn around I felt like I was twitching so I turned that down relatively quick. But let's talk about some of the visuals because this is something else that I was a little bit concerned going into because the PlayStation 4 and Xbox One versions of Dark Souls Remastered were very sparkling. Let's face facts the upgrade wasn't going to be super substantial despite the fact that it's says remastered in the title, this is essentially just a new version of an old game, and here it seems like things are still just about in the same ballpark. Visually, things are not quite as good as they were on other systems. Like, just real quick, let's just take a little gander at some gameplay from the PlayStation 4 version. So, here I am just running around underground, smashing people with my crystal sword, and getting a couple kills. Now, going back to the Switch version, Version, you can see that they're still very very close. If anything, I would predict that this is a little bit closer to the Xbox 360 version. So it's something that definitely looks good and it, it definitely conveys everything it needs to. It's not too dark, it's not too bright, and I do think some stuff like these sparkly effects that they've put in for this remastered version look really nice. The new tweaks to graphics when it comes to things like spells and magic still look fantastic especially when it's like a really big enemy throwing stuff at you. There is something that's a little bit peculiar though that doesn't really kind of really make sense, which is that I notice that there is a small delay in sound effects, maybe only about a microsecond or a tenth of a second, but sometimes when I'm trying to bash people, I will notice that I'll hit somebody and then hear the clink of a blade afterward. And it's something that was a little bit odd at the start, and after about an hour or so, my brain started to try and align it. But I'm not sure if this is going to get patched, but if you're trying to listen for the footsteps of an incoming enemy, or trying to listen to see if a dragon is about to bro fire, it sucks a little bit that these are not exactly perfect. Now, something that is very cool though, is I think they managed to really, really nail the handheld mode. I am I'm so blown away by just how smooth this is. In general, I would say that this is probably the number one reason people are going to buy it on Nintendo Switch is because they want to be able to have this big epic quest anywhere, and here uh, I can say that it definitely functions well. If anything, and this is going to be a little bit shocking to say, I actually think it runs better in handheld than it does on docked. It seems like what they did is they dramatically lowered the resolution 
attention when you're in handheld mode, but it's not super noticeable. I mean, when I was running around and trying to slay stuff, it all looked good enough for being a handheld, but the frame rate was very, very solid. It made it much smoother looking just to be able to run around with this in my hands. But talking on the subject of frame rate, this is probably the thing that baffles me the most because it's a little bit inconsistent. So other consoles, of course, have it at 60 frames a second, but in general, this is supposed to be locked around 30 FPS, and sometimes it would dip between 20 and 25 frames, but here's the really strange part, which is that I don't really know why. Sometimes there'd be 80 enemies on screen all trying to cut my throat simultaneously, and the game is keeping up perfectly fine. There is zero issue whatsoever, but other times I'll just be standing alone in a hallway and it seems like the game starts sputtering and I don't quite get it. It seems like if I had to guess, the game is constantly trying to load upcoming spaces. It's trying to load the rooms around you. So if you're running in a particular area of the castle, it's probably trying to hurry up and throw everything together for that next room. And that seems like what could be causing these frame rate issues. Because sometimes when I was walking towards more bulky areas, that's when I would see stuff start to become a little bit more of a slideshow. Overall though, when it comes to just graphics and the general way this engine functions, I can say that it's quite remarkable and I'm very happy with it. But I think that things are going to be very interesting when it comes to just playing the game. Seeing people who have never tried Dark Souls ever in their life suddenly being dropped into this world and trying to read different items and figure out the story and do the player versus player combat and probably getting killed a ton. So something else that I really want to highlight is I was experimenting with the online play because good infrastructure and being able to connect to the internet is very, very important. Most of the games in this series aren't particularly long. I mean, you can theoretically beat most of the Dark Souls games in about 8 to 12 hours. But the thing that keeps you coming back and going through it is stuff like New Game Plus to see the extra hard difficulties and player versus player combat. So I decided to try and experiment with this a bit and everything seemed to work very very smooth. It seems like perhaps either From Software or Nintendo have set up dedicated servers because things seem to be working very very tight. I like this a lot and I ended up running through an entire set of this uh, little demo type set with a co-op partner just just a random person online and we were able to just kick so much butt. There was not a single time where anybody was skipping around or it seemed like either of us was having some sort of error that did not allow us to connect seamlessly with the system. So I guess I can really say that despite some concerns that this wouldn't run great or the fact that they had to delay it so much, it seems like they really managed to iron out all the stuff. I am for sure going to be buying the full game when it comes out next month, but mostly because I am such a super hardcore lover of this franchise. If you are somebody who's just a little bit on the fence, I would still say probably pick this up, especially if you have never tried any of these games. However, with that being said, if you already own this game on the PlayStation 4 or the Xbox One, I don't think that this is really necessary. The handheld mode is awesome, but unless you're buying it specifically for that, this really doesn't offer anything new other than some slight graphical downgrades. But still, it's something that's very, very cool that it even exists. Okay, so uh, yeah, I can't believe it's real, and here it is, and uh, I'm gonna go back into this beta test and try and kill a few more people. Full honesty here, I'm most likely not going to be reviewing the full game when it comes out later on, simply because October is already incredibly crammed with different big games that I really, really want to try out. But thank you for watching this video, and let's hope that the final game is something that's completely worth every dollar we spend on it. So there we have it. It's still so cool that this even exists. And I will say that from this test, I now realize that it's a pretty good port. I'm definitely going to be picking it up, but mostly because I'm such a diehard freaking Dark Souls fanboy. So thanks for watching and uh, you guys rock. Now do me the biggest favor of all and keep 
streaming. All right, bye. By the way, I actually secretly had to record this while sitting on my knees, and oh, it hurts. I'm an old man, I can't do this. Oh, hey, I was just playing a little bit of Grand Theft Auto on my Darth Vader PSP. Are you curious what I'm gonna come out with next? Well, if you click this button, you'll be subscribed to be the first to know. Also, if you click over here and here, you can see my latest review and my latest top 10. I promise, it was super good. Or it was really bad, and I'm sure you can just make fun of me in the comments. Either way, it'll be a lot of fun. Thanks so much for watching.